Have you ever wondered about the intricate relationships and behind-the-scenes drama in the world of cryptocurrencies? Well, today we have an intriguing story that sheds light on the connections between some major players in the industry. I notice a YouTube picture of this, a Manhattan federal courtroom filled with anticipation as the trial against FTX co-founder Sam Bankman-Fried unfolds. But what makes this trial particularly interesting is the unexpected take of Zach Prince, the CEO of BlockFi, and now defunct crypto lender. As Prince takes the stand, the courtroom falls silent, eager to hear what he has to say, and boy does he have some revelations to share. You see, Prince's can appearance provides valuable insights into the complex relationship between BlockFi FTX, and Awanita Research. According to Prince, BlockFi had a staggering exposure of around $1 billion to Alameda and FTX when it faced financial failure in November 2022. He boldly claims that if you look at to just continuing grade of $24,000 to Alameda, we're still in good standing, and the funds on FTX were available, BlockFi would never have filed for bankruptcy. The statement suggests that block troubles were intricately tied to the collapse of Alameda and FTX. Uh, but here's where it gets interesting. Uh, Prince's testimony diverges significantly from Caroline Ellison, uh, the government's star witness who portrays Bankman Fried as the mastermind behind a fraudulent scheme, alleges that Bankman Fried used FTX customer funds for speculative trading at Alameda. Um, and Prince, on the other hand, um, positions BlockFi as a victim of Bank and Fred's uh, alleged schemes. Uh, he claims that BlockFi made loans to Alameda based on misleading balance sheets, uh, insinuating they were deceived. However, defense lawyers argue that BlockFi willingly provided the loans to Alameda, fully aware of the associated risks. And during the trial, the judge requests plainer terms from Prince regarding BlackFi's due diligence uh, process. In response, Prince uses an analogy involving car loans to explain the intricacies. Prosecution questions the adequacy of BlockFi's due diligence, accusing the company of failing to recognize warning signs before offering substantial loans to Alameda. Uh, Prince, in his testimony, uh, highlights that providing unaudited balance sheets uh, is a common practice in the industry when seeking loans. Uh, the defense seeks to establish that uh, BlockFi knew the risks of uh, lending to Alameda and acted within industry norms. And as Prince's testimony unfolds, it becomes clear that this trial is not just about one individual's alleged fraudulent activities, it's about the interconnectedness of the crypto industry and potential repercussions of such actions. And, uh, but let's not forget the aftermath. BlockFi, unfortunately, can no longer be utilized for crypto-related activities. The company declared bankruptcy and suspended withdrawals in November 2022. This bankruptcy filing indicates that BlockFi owes a significant amount, ranging from $1 billion to $10 billion, to over 100,000 creditors. As the trial continues, the court will delve deeper into the details surrounding BlockFi's lending practices and the extent of Bank and Fred's involvement in the alleged schemes. The differing narratives presented by the prosecution and defense only highlight the complexities of the case. Um, so next time you hear about a high-profile trial in the crypto world, um, remember that there's often more to the story uh, than meets the eye. And as we eagerly wait the outcome of this trial, let's hope that justice prevails and that the truth behind these intertwined relationships uh, is, is revealed. And now for a little lightheartedness amidst all this drama, why did the cryptocurrency go to therapy? Because he had too many issues. With that said, thanks for watching and until next time.